Hi Lena, welcome on board this session. In this session, we will be focusing on the primary flight instruments, particularly the altimeter, airspeed indicator, vertical speed indicator, and turn bank indicator. This topic is entitled to the subject flight mechanics, and the target audience for this session are gate aerospace aspirants, aeronautical, and aerospace engineering students. We are following the flight mechanics syllabus for gate aerospace engineering and uh, we have completed so up to this particular topic and in this session we will be focusing on this portion of the syllabus. The previous lecture we did know about airspeeds and its types. In this session we will be focusing on primary flight instruments and this session will be categorized into two different categories that is the pitot static system and its instruments and uh, the gyroscopic instruments under pitot static system and instruments we will be seeing the altimeter airspeed and the vertical speed indicators and uh, under gyroscopic instruments we will be seeing the turn and slip indicator and further we will be proceeding to the turn coordinators so what is a flight instrument Flight instrument or instruments which are generally placed in the cockpit of an aircraft provide the pilot with the data about the flight situation such as altitude or uh, vertical speed, the airspeed, the heading and in particular there are six primary flight instruments and uh, we can see the names of those six mentioned over here. So these six instruments are the basic instruments which can be found in any kind of aircraft and uh, in this session we will be focusing on the first four uh, instruments as they are particularly mentioned in syllabus and we will be seeing in general about the further two systems let's get to know about them so we have to note over here that uh, the instruments are categorized into two categories that is the systems are either uh, pitot static uh, based instruments so the first three are pitot static based instruments and the next three are gyroscopic based instruments we will be seeing about them in detail in the further portion of the syllabus session pitot static system before knowing the pitot static system we need to know the location of pitot static system or the position of the particular instrument in an aircraft so here are uh, four different types of uh, aircraft so in a common airliner you can find the pitot static system in the nose region that is this particular portion so here you can see that uh, there are two pitot static tubes positioned uh, over here so this provides uh, all the necessary uh, readings for the aircraft and one general uh, note of this location is that the pitot static uh, tube or the instrument has to be placed in the further portion of the aircraft as it needs uh, the fresh air so the air which is uh, getting into the pitot static tube or introduced into the pitot static tube should be uh, should not be actually influenced by some other effect or it should not be blocked by some other thing so here in a uh, normal twin uh, there are about seven seater this is a seven or a ten seater airplane small airplane the pitot static tube is uh, placed over the wing on it and it's on both sides of the wing if you notice so it is placed particularly in this portion because there is rotor over here so this rotor influences the air uh, around the fuselage so for choosing an optimal location they have placed it on wing as uh, the air is less influenced on wing so in an U this is a uav unmanned aerial vehicle and the pitot static tube is placed on the nose portion of the aircraft and here this is a fighter jet uh, and uh, here it is also placed in the forward portion of the aircraft in the nose region so this is the intake of it and uh, this is actually uh, supersonic fighter jet maybe because the uh, nose cone itself uh, indicates it so this isn't important for this session let's proceed further 
I have seen the uh, without static system in general or from an outside perspective. Now, this is a detailed perspective of a without static system and the instruments which depend on these. So, as I said, there are three basic uh, flight instruments which totally depend on uh, without static system. And we have seen the functioning of without static system in the previous lesson. The link to this session uh, or the previous session will be provided on the right top corner as you took cards. So here we can see this is the pitot uh, line or pitot tube uh, which is in the brown portion and, uh, and uh, we have the static port that is the perpendicular port and these two are the static ports the gray region and these are connected to the instruments. So pitot static system is a combined system that utilizes static air pressure obtained from the static port. So this is the static port static chamber is mentioned over here and this is a static hole the two holes which you can see notice so and the dynamic pressure due to the motion of aircraft through the air so this is a uh, ram pressure ram air which uh, enters into baffle plate is nothing uh, it's kind of a filter uh, so we can neglect it it isn't important for understanding still uh, in practical it is important so these combined pressures are utilized for the operation of the air speed indicator, altimeter and vertical speed indicator. Here we can see the pitot static tube uh, indicated in the red color is connected with the air speed indicator and the static port. So there are uh, basically two static ports. So these two static ports uh, are used for redundancy purpose and for accuracy. So these are uh, indicated in blue color. So here we can see the connections running to the air speed indicator, the vertical speed indicator, and the altimeter. And uh, one other thing to notice is that uh, the air speed indicator is the only instrument which is getting both the connections, where the other two instruments are getting only the static uh, ports connection. And uh, the static pressure, we need to know that static pressure is also known as ambient pressure, and it is always present whether the aircraft is moving or uh, rest. So there was a uh, really practical example in the last session. So I recommend you to uh, read it, uh, listen to it, or you can read it through uh, J.D. Anderson's book, uh, The Flies Example. So dynamic pressure is present only when the aircraft is in motion. So whenever the aircraft moves, the air accelerates into it so there is some motion and the pressure caused due to the motion is the dynamic pressure so air airspeed indicator as i mentioned is the only instrument which uses uh, the pitot tube so other use the static tubes so altimeter and vsi utilize only the static pressure that is derived from the static port so this is the static port this is an alternate source there is also a static port or static chamber over here so now we will getting to know about the systems altimeter the first system we are going to uh, learn about is altimeter so altimeter as we know or as the na name suggests it has to do something with the altitude so altitude alt uh, is for altitude and meter as i said uh, m e t e r in British English is used for instruments and METRE in British English is used for distance. Uh, so here the pressure altimeter. So generally this altimeter functions based on pressure. So this is named as pressure altimeter is an aneroid barometer that measures the pressure of the atmosphere at the level where the altimeter is located and presents an altitude indication in pit. So basically this altimeter is an instrument which reads some kind of pressure and uh, provides us the altitude. So here we can see that uh, it is barometer used is uh, basically used to uh, find the height. So aneroid, what does this uh, word aneroid mean? So aneroid is basically something or the word which means uh, this barometer has to deal with the expansion and compression of the bag or deformation of uh, the uh, diaphragm. Okay, so now uh, we will get into the functioning of altimeter. How does this function? So basically when we see an altimeter, it has a stacked seal of aneroid wafers evacuated to an internal pressure of 
29.92 inches of mercury so this is uh, indication for inch and hg is uh, short form of mercury so here we can see that uh, this is a structure of uh, altimeter and uh, one thing to be noticed is that these are the sealed wafers so this all can also be called as diaphragms this can uh, basically expand or uh, uh, compress so here the pressure inside this uh, neuroid wafers or diaphragm is evacuated to 29.92 inches of mercury that is the pressure inside this always remains as 29.92 inches of mercury the pressure here inside this is uh, already uh, prefixed during manufacturing and it is maintained so it isn't connected with any other kind of uh, uh, source once uh, it has been manufactured it is in changed so these wafers are free to expand and contract with changes to static pressure so basically altimeter uh, obtains this uh, static pressure as its source so it obtains the source so, so the static pressure uh, a tube uh, through a tube is introduced into the cabin or uh, the chamber of it so when uh, static pressure so in the pressure inside the wafer is uh, 29.92 inches of mercury so the pressure outside is obtained directly from the uh, atmospheric pressure atmospheric static pressure whenever the atm atmospheric pressure is higher or lower than uh, the pressure inside the diaphragm this diaphragm expands or contracts so this expansion and contraction or uh, technically compression and expansion provide as, provides us with the reading so whenever whenever uh, there is a decrease in altitude that is the air pressure increases so uh, pressure will be uh, outer the diaphragm will be uh, higher than the pressure inside the diaphragm so it will compress the diaphragm so wafer compression means uh, decrease in altitude here we can see the indications and uh, when the, uh, there is increase in altitude the air pressure basically decreases with increase in altitude so uh, as the pressure inside the diaphragm is higher than the pressure outside the diaphragm the diaphragm basically expands so this wafer expansion uh, indicates increase in altitude so this uh, expansion and contraction uh, of the wafers moves the linkage mechanical linkages so here we can see some kind of complex mechanical linkages so which drives the needles of the face so these are basically connected to a needle so here we can see the needles and uh, these are connected to the face where the indications are present now we will uh, see the general perspective of altimeter so altimeter as i said uh, this has to do something with the altitude so it measures the height of an aircraft and uh, the altimeter uses a static pressure as its source uh, from the static port we also should note that air is denser at sea level than aloft that is uh, upper above the altitude so as altitude increases the atmosphere pressure decreases so uh, this difference in pressure at various levels causes the altimeter to indicate change in altitude as i said the compression and expansion we also need to know that uh, this is totally based on the standard atmosphere model and uh, uh, one other thing to note is that uh, in reality the standard atmosphere model is followed still from practical significance the temperature pressure and uh, density aren't uh, that constant or uh, stable so some kind of uh, non-standard term has to be introduced so there needs to be some kind of adjustment for this uh, variation so these adjustment for non-standard pressures are uh, accomplished or done by uh, using the corrected pressure into the barometric scale located on the phase of the altimeter so this is known as coleman's window so this is kind of a uh, button correction button uh, which helps us do it so here we can see that uh, in actual altimeter in all the three uh, instruments uh, indications here we can see an additional knob kind of structure so this is a barometric uh, scale adjustment knob uh, as i mentioned uh, so any correction here also we can notice that uh, 
there is a knob so this knob is known as the Col Colesman window and uh, this is used for correcting the non-standard uh, pr pressure corrections we also need to know about this because uh, this uh, typically varies based on the region so the colder the air it is denser so the colder air is uh, denser than the warm air uh, we need to know this because uh, according to the geometry uh, uh, geographical location such as uh, the air is colder uh, or uh, the air is denser in uh, Russia because uh, the temperature is colder over there and it is uh, less dense in India because it is uh, India is warmer than uh, Russia. It is based on the geog geographical location and the climate. Now we are moving on to the next uh, instrument. So the airspeed indicator. Airspeed indicator is a differential pressure gauge. So uh, it detects the difference between the pressure and operates based on it. That measures the, and indicates the difference between dynamic pressure and the static pressure. So dynamic pressure here it is uh, pitot. They are mentioning the pitot pressure. So here, as uh, we can see, uh, the airspeed indicator obtains its source from two particular uh, points. That is, the pitot also obtains uh, value from the pitot tube and it also obtains the value from the static airline. So we yeah, we did notice that uh, the airspeed indicator in particular, I'll clear the other things. So here we can see that airspeed indicator is obtaining uh, its uh, pressure from two sources, that is the uh, pitot source in, mentioned in red color and the static source mentioned in the blue color. So, here we will see the functioning of it as i said it uses both the pitot as well as the static system so as a source so air speed in indicator introduces the static pressure into the air speed case so the static pressure is introduced into the case that is outside the diaphragm all these regions are uh, having the static pressure as it is introduced to a pipe or line so while the pitot pressure or the dynamic pressure is introduced into the diaphragm so the pitot pressure is directly introduced into this diaphragm so these are the wafers and the red wafers so the dynamic pressure expands or contracts one side of the diaphragm which is atti uh, attached to the link indicating system so once there is a change in the dynamic pressure or the pitot pressure so the uh, diaphragm or uh, the wafers basically expand or contract in one direction because the base portion is fixed so it has to either expand or contract and as dynamic pressure increases so it will basically expand as dynamic pressure is uh, higher than the static pressure which is outside the diaphragm and this change is linked uh, through a mechanical linkage and uh, this mechanical linkage totally uh, transforms the deflection into some kind of reading so here we can see a detailed diagram of it and uh, now we will move on to the vertical speed indicator vertical speed indicator is basically the same um, of airspeed indicator instead it uh, provides us the reading in the vertical direction but the functioning totally differs so vertical speed indicator provides us with the rate of climb or descent and uh, it provides us in the feet per mi uh, minute uh, units so a vertical speed indicator uh, basically indicates whether the aircraft is climbing or descending or in level flight so if there is some variation it uh, needs to be either climbing or descending now VSI, vsi which is a short form of vertical speed indicator or also it is also known as vvi that is vertical velocity indicator so vsi vertical speed indicator solely uh, operates so uh, from the static pressure still it is a differential pressure instrument so it uh, generally has a static pressure as a source and uh, the pitot pressure or dynamic pressure isn't introduced still it is a differential pressure instrument how does that happen 
So differential pressure, we know that uh, the difference between two pressures are detected and it is transformed into some kind of indication. So how is this achieved when uh, we have a single uh, pre kind of pressure source that is a static pressure? So here we should see that inside of the diaphragm, diaphragm is uh, connected directly to the static line of without static system. So the static line, so either this or the static line is connected to the inside of the diaphragm. So the inside of the diaphragm is filled with the static source from the pitot static system or the pitot uh, source, only the static source. So this isn't considered only the pitot, uh, static uh, source. So the area outside the diaphragm is also connected to the static line, but through a restricted orifice. Here we can see this is the direct connection. So another so uh, thing is that the outside of the diaphragm, so this area is uh, basically connected to, uh, to an all. It is also connected to a static source, but through a restricted orifice or calibrated leak. So basically, when uh, there is a change in altitude or uh, as the aircraft climbs or descends, there is a sudden change uh, within the uh, diaphragm as the static source is directly connected and there is a calibrated leak connection or the uh, second connection which is uh, sourced into the case is metered that is the you know, the change is in sudden so it is basically in uh, uh, metered uh, leak it is provided as a metered leak that is uh, the pressure the static pressure isn't uh, directly allowed instead it is uh, allowed slowly so as there is a difference uh, in, in the pressure, the static pressure inside the diaphragm and the outside the diaphragm, it operates based on the differential pressure because there is a difference in pressure. So this, uh, the diaphragm receives the unrestricted air. So it is directly uh, from the static source and it isn't uh, restricted. It is directly allowed. So next the case receives the static pressure via a metered leak so the pressure is generally metered so it is indirectly allowed so it is uh, generally restricted so the differential pressure that is indicated on the instrument needle as a climb or descent so once there is some change detected the mechanical linkage uh, converts it into a uh, reading we will also know two kinds of information so it will provide us with the trend information that is uh, either the aircraft is uh, climbing or uh, descending or in level flight or the rate of information so it will also provide us the rate at which we are climbing now we will be uh, further proceeding to the next portion or the category of uh, this session that is the gyroscopic instruments so turn indicators are basically uh, based on the gyroscopic instruments and there are two types of turn indicators. It has to be either turn and slip indicators or turn coordinators. The basic difference is that the turn and slip indicators provide us with the rate of turn in degrees per second. And uh, the turn coordinators provide us with the roll rate and the rate of turn. And uh, another thing to note over here is that the turn and slip indicator is also known as the turn and bank indicators. So slip is nothing but an another term or terminology of uh, banking. So here we can see the two types of uh, turn indicators. The first one is an example of turn coordinators and the next one is return and slip indicators. So basically when we follow the syllabus, the syllabus only mentions uh, turn and bank indicator that is also known as turn and slip indicator. We'll be seeing about its function. Turn and uh, slip indicators, as I said, uh, it is basically uh, based on the gyroscopic instruments. So it has to do something with the gyros. So the turn and slip indicators rotates in a vertical uh, plane corresponding to the aircraft's longitudinal axis. So here we can see the axis of rotation it is in longitudinal axis and uh, here it rotates vertically. So in this particular direction. So when there is some change in uh, 
the banking or uh, when the aircraft is in turn uh, it, uh, the gyroscopic instrument basically rotates uh, instead the aircraft is in steady and it is turning in some particular direction so it is in either turning in this direction or this direction particularly like this or this so when there is a turn the aircraft uh, or the case will tend to turn still the gyroscope will uh, tend to keep its position due to the precision uh, which is a part of its functioning it is meant to be in such way so the yawing force causes the gyro to tilt left or right based on the yawing force that is the turn as viewed from the pilot seat so this basically turns in this direction or uh, in the opposite left or right direction when we uh, see from pilot's perspective thus uh, when there is a turn detected this will be turned into a rate of turn through mechanical linkages so the turn slip indicator uses a pointer which is known as turn needle to show the direction so the left or right and uh, the rate of turn using some kind of meter so here we also having inclinometer which provides us with the inclination of the aircraft we did see all the four instruments and uh, we have to know about the other two instruments which aren't mentioned in the syllabus that is a heading indicator and uh, the another one so here we can see that uh, modern uh, aircrafts don't have uh, the systems uh, typically looking like those we uh, looked before so they are uh, uh, transformed or modified with the digital replaced with the digital ones so here this is a basic primary flight display all these instruments are uh, converted or uh, transformed into uh, modern digital display so this is an lcd screen which has all the basic primary flight displays uh, provided uh, inside it so we have here we have the airspeed indicator here we can see horizontal situation indicator vertical speed indicator altimeter and turn rate indicator turn rate vector and so on and so forth slip and skid indicator this is for banking so we need to know just two other uh, kind of indicators that is uh, heading indicator and uh, the other thing is that uh, we need to know about the altitude indicator so basically uh, heading indicator shows us in which heading we are proceeded in so this is the heading indicator the arrow mark and uh, the attitude indicator basically uh, provides us the level so here consider this white level as our aircraft so this is uh, these two are uh, stationary and uh, this provides a temporary horizon or uh, ground so once there is some climb or roll or whatever kind of action this varies um, uh, parallelly with the uh, kind of maneuver so once there is a climb the yellow mark will go up indicating that we are climbing so this will provide a temporary uh, uh, horizon so if we are in a level flight the horizon is going to be at zero so when we are climbing or descending it will provide us the change this is the purpose of attitude indicator and uh, and when we go, go into uh, more complex systems or uh, the commonly used uh, instruments such as uh, uh, the cockpit of uh, passenger airliner we will be seeing uh, instruments which are more advanced than the systems which we learned so here we can see the basic systems and additionally there are other systems too so the, this displays off here we can see the gps and the location here they are particularly seeing the weather the cloud movement and similar kind of and there are million other kind of buttons so these are the multifunctional display we did know about uh, the primary flight instruments so what is the physical significance of it where is it used uh, or what is its purpose the purpose of uh, these primary flight instruments are uh, to reduce the mid-air collision because uh, as we know where we are we can inform the ATC and uh, they can potentially avoid the mid-air collision by guiding the aircraft uh, we also need to know the unit conversion because all these instruments show us uh, the units in feet or foot 
foot is a singular term and feet is a plural term so one uh, foot is equal to 0 0.3048 meter so here the meter is uh, the distance uh, or the unit of distance so we need to know the unit conversion the modern aircrafts need not use uh, these kind of it because uh, they already convert the uh, you know, readings in user referred uh, units but uh, from an engineering perspective we need to know because uh, uh, solutions or uh, questions we have we will be asked will uh, not have uh, the unit conversion in particular so we need to know about it so flight instruments basically informs us where we are they uh, act as our eyes and uh, it helps in navigate navigation because out there we don't have any signboards or uh, someone to ask for a route so we need to know wh where we are and at what speed we are traversing which uh, helps us know where we are and uh, uh, also know whether we are uh, proceeding in the right direction uh, people who have uh, traveled in aircrafts or airplanes uh, would have noticed that once we uh, get into the cruising stage we won't be knowing where we are particularly we will be floating above the clouds it is uh, basically all the same so we need to know, know this because navigation is important so they are also termed as primary flight instruments there are several other instruments still these six are termed as primary instruments because of its vital function so even though all uh, the other systems may not function these six instruments are needed for an aircraft to navigate to a particular location uh, I also recommend uh, everyone to read the book reference particular this chapter because uh, reading a particular topic in book provides you a deep knowledge about the particular topic and uh, about this particular topic primary flight instruments this book pilot's handbook of aeronautical knowledge 2016 version which is freely available uh, in the federal aviation administration FAA's uh, website for everyone to download the particular chapter chapter 8 the flight instruments provide a very simplistic and uh, deeper knowledge about this topic primary flight instruments and the illustration is totally infographic so you can basically uh, visualize everything uh, which you are reading we have reached the summary portion of this session we did know about the pitot static systems and instruments we also know, uh, knew about the uh, basic functioning of these instruments and the type of instruments which are categorized under this category we will uh, we did uh, also pro uh, further proceed to the gyroscopic instruments and the uh, further uh, uh, instruments which are categorized under it uh, we also knew about the modern utilization of these systems and the modern view of these systems that's it for this session thank you let's crack gate aerospace engineering